Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're all doing awesome. Did you notice that behind me there's some trees, apple trees. Those apples are all red and ready to be picked. It's time to harvest the apples, isn't it? Well, in today's story, the children are going to harvest some fruit. Listen carefully to what kind of fruit they're going to help harvest at Dr. Moore's house. Chapter 9. Fun at the Cherry Orchard. Did you hear that word orchard? An orchard is a place where there's lots of fruit trees. So you, if you plant a bunch of fruit trees all together, we'll call it an orchard. Yep, good job. The next morning, Henry thought and thought about taking the other children with him to pick cherries. At last, he told his sisters about it as they ate bread and milk for breakfast. Dr. Moore said he wanted more children to help. Do you think all of us ought to go, Jesse? Well, said Jesse, I don't know. You see, there are four of us, and if Grandfather is looking for us, it would be easier to see four than to see one. Yes, that is so, answered Henry, but we can go down the hill and through the street two by two. I'll take Benny and go ahead. Then in a little while, you and Violet can come along with the dog. Good, said Jesse. Watch can tell where you go. The children took the, down the clothesline and shut the door of the car. Everything was in order. Then they started out. When they arrived at the orchard, they soon saw that they were not the only workers. The doctor was there and the cook and two men carrying ladders and baskets. Good morning, Henry, said Mrs. Moore. Can you work today? Oh, yes, said Henry. These are my sisters, Jessie and Violet. They can pick cherries too. Benny's too young to climb a ladder, but we had to bring him. Maybe he can carry baskets, said Dr. Moore, smiling at Benny. You see, this is a big cherry year and we have to work fast once it begins. Maybe we can help fill the little baskets. You can help fill the little baskets from the big ones. You can also eat all you want, said Mrs. Moore. The cherries are beautiful this year. The children didn't eat all they wanted, but every now and then a big red cherry went into someone's mouth. Henry and the girls went up the ladders and began to pick cherries. Watch Bart for a while. He did not like having Jessie climbing a ladder, but then he sat down and looked up at her in the tree. Benny hurried here and there carrying baskets to the pickers and eating all the cherries he wanted. Everyone in the orchard liked Benny. The doctor laughed delightedly at him and sweet Mrs. Moore fell in love with him at once. By and by, he sat down beside her and carefully filled small baskets with cherries from the big baskets. The men laughed at the funny things that Benny said and watched Bart happily. By and by, the doctor left the orchard to make some calls. At last, Mrs. Moore said, I never had such happy cherry pickers before. You are having such a good time out here that I don't want to go in the house, she smiled. Mary, the cook, seemed to think the same thing, for she came out again and again into the orchard. And after a while, the cook went in to get dinner, but the children still picked cherries. At noon, Miss Dr. Moore came back. You must stay to dinner, he said to the children. We can eat here in the orchard under the trees. Will your mother be watching for you? When he asked this, he looked at Henry in a queer way. Henry did not know what to say, but at last Jesse said, no, my mother and father are dead. Well, then you must stay, said Mrs. Moore. Come here, Mary. here comes Mary. The, the cook took a table under the tree and they all sat around it and ate delicious dinner. Then Mary went into the house and came out again with a big bowl of cherry dumplings. I can smell something good, said Benny. Is it cherries? Yes, my little dear, said Mary. Cherry dumplings. The cherries are cooked in the dumplings. Benny ate his cherry dumpling and then went to sleep with the dog for a pillow. But Henry and Jesse and Violet began to work again. Mrs. Moore looked out the window at them. Wow, just see how those children work, she said to Dr. Moore. And they are so polite, too. I wonder who they are. Dr. Moore said nothing. And after a while, he went out to the orchard. You have worked long enough, he said. He gave them four dollars and all the cherries they could carry. Oh, that's too much, said Henry. No, said Dr. Moore, it's just right. You see, you are better than most workers because you are so happy. Come again. I'll come every day, said Benny. They all laughed. 
Dr. Moore saw the children did not all leave the orchard at the same time, but started down the street two by two. Hmm, I wish I knew who they are, he said to himself. When the cherry pickers got back to their little home, they found everything, they looked everything over carefully, but things were just as they had left them. The door was still closed, the milk and butter were in the refrigerator, and the children made a sup happy supper of bread, butter, and cherries, and then they went to bed in the boxcar. That same night, Dr. Moore sat reading the paper. All at once, he saw the word lost, and he began to read. Lost. Four children, two boys and two girls, somewhere around Greenfield or Silver City. $5,000 to anyone who can find them. James Henry Alden. Dr. Moore sat up. $5,000, he said. Henry, James Henry Alden. Oh my, oh my. He sat still for a long time thinking and laughing to himself. The four children are living in a boxcar but I shall not tell Mr. Alden that they are his grandchildren, he said. That's the end of the story. So Dr. Moore knows who these four children are, but he said he's not gonna tell. Hmm, they seem pretty happy. I'm not sure. Should he tell? Should he call the grandfather? Should he get the $5,000 reward? In today's story, right? It's your opinion. Say yes, he should definitely call their grandpa and tell them where the children are. Or you can say no. I don't think that he should call because, make sure you add because, and then you tell your reason why you think that he should call and talk to the, doc, to the um, grandpa, or why he shouldn't call and talk to the grandpa. Have a great time. And I'll see you tomorrow.